Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to PR News Live. I'm Nicole Schumann, and I'm a reporter here at PR News, and I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, if you have any questions today, please pop them into the comments, and we'll get to them throughout the chat. And I'd also like to wish everybody a happy Veterans Day, if we have any veterans that are watching, uh, which will play into who we have on today. Um, today, I would like to welcome Sean Sullivan, he is a PR liaison for Wreaths Across America. And Wreaths Across America is a pretty cool nonprofit. Um, They're founded to continue and expand the annual wreath laying ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery, which was begun in 1992 by Maine businessman Moral Wooster. Did I say that right? Wooster. 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 My fiance always makes fun of me because I say woo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the organization's mission, Remember, Honor, Teeth, is carried out in part each year by coordinating wreath laying ceremonies at thousands of veteran cemeteries in all 50 states and beyond. Now, National Wreaths Across America Day is on December 19th, but we'd like to feature this organization today because it is a special day, it is Veterans Day. And while this event is usually open to all people, this year each individual location is going to have to be abiding by necessary safety guidelines and rules set forth by participating cemetery locations um, at which they are their guests. So we're going to talk to Sean today about how the organization plans to adapt this year with COVID-19 precautions and some of the different communication strategies and methods that we're putting out there. So welcome, Sean. We're glad to have you here. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, so first, I'd like to talk about an article featured on PR News today. Um, we had a great writer pop in, Major Steve Manuel. Major Manuel is a U.S. retired U.S. Marine, and he's also an associate teaching professor of PR and advertising at Penn State. So Major Manuel compares doing PR for the military much like how one would do PR for a corporate civilian. Uh, it's a lot about telling a story and creating a positive environment for the product. And Manuel says PR is about establishing and maintaining a hospitable environment between the organization and its various publics. So as PR pros, we don't necessarily directly sell anything, but we create a positive environment to sell our product, be it a toaster or sailors. Uh, so selling our military is easier than selling a toaster in large part that is due to the high quality of the product and because it is compromise, comprised of everyday Americans willing to sacrifice for the needs of a grateful nation. So we thank uh, Major Manuel for contributing that to us. And, and Sean, I, I'd like to ask you, uh, you know, in dealing with veterans and, and you know, somewhat with the military, what has your experience been like surrounding PR in your organization? How do your stakeholders take to the program and the veterans that it honors? Sure. Um, you know, it went, with Steve's article, I can understand his point of view and where he's coming from. And um, the, the phrase low-hanging fruit comes, comes to mind because when you start putting out a message, like, for instance, Reads Across America, um, our message is going to folks who have lost a friend or a loved one or something like that in, in, in whether it be in the midst of war or even in the midst of the community. Um, there's somebody who served and they're no longer with us. And th there's a desire to make sure that they're remembered. And with that, I, I share uh, Steve's sentiment in uh, folks like that. I mean, you, you don't have to do a whole lot of sales in order to have them understand, you know what, uh, your, your relative passed away, maybe you should honor them. Um, you know, that's, that's, it's almost a no brainer at that point. Um, you know, I usually save things for sales, like, like talking about toaster or snow blowers. Um, I, I use snow blowers as an example. I'm in the new England area and, uh, there's definitely a difference between a snow blower that you, you buy at a box store and you end up going through it, you know, once every two years, versus the one I have now, which I bought at a dealership, and that has lasted me for six years with no problems. There's a difference there. Um, that's when you do sales, because now you're taking somebody out of the box store, and then you're putting them into a dealership location. Um, for this, I'm not really doing sales. Um, what I think I'm doing is I think I'm, as public relations, doing introductions. And the story does become an important part of that because 
as you gather stories and as you hear people talk and hear the things that they have to have to add from their experiences, because not every person can have every experience, you, you take these experiences and you start to share them with other people and other organizations and other places. And in sharing these stories, it's a matter of matching up the right story to the right situation. And once you do that, you create interest. And once you've created that interest through that introduction between the right audience and the right story, then the rest happens on its own. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, fortunately veterans have some of the most amazing stories when you talk to them, when you give them the time to uh, reflect on, on their service. Um, my 95 year old uncle who is still with us uh, served in World War II. So I love him. I know he loves to talk and he loves to talk about the first time he landed in Europe and you know all of these things and, and they're such special stories that you know might not be heard otherwise had it been for organizations like yours and and others that are working with and honoring veterans across the country. So, so we well, the interesting. The interesting thing about Reads Across America, too, is that it isn't just veterans focused. So when we talk about things like Memorial Day and Veterans Day, these are really about the, the soldiers and people in the military and folks that have, have sacrificed and, and things of that sort. But when we talk about Reads Across America Day, it's moving a little bit past that soldier and that, that serviceman and, and that service woman to being a person, somebody's father, somebody's mother, a brother, a daughter. Um, and, and we see them as people. And see, you know, some of the interesting stories that you hear don't necessarily have to come from the veterans or people who served. Um, as a matter of fact, last night, uh, we were on a conference call and a woman and her husband who had served in the military uh, decided that they wanted to be a part of Reads Across America, and they opened up a group. So this group, what it does is it gathers reads, and it places it at a location, a cemetery of their choice in their area. And in doing so, this was a project they were going to work on together, and it was going to be a husband-wife thing. He no longer serves, he was retired, and he also passed away. And the interesting thing is that the very first wreath that she placed for Reads Across America was her own husband's. Oh, wow. That's powerful. And that's not necessarily a military story or a veteran story. That's a wife's story. That's, that's a family member's story. And the power that that wreath and the meaning that that had to give her husband honor and remember him and be able to say his name, which is what we encourage all of all of our volunteers to do when they lay these wreaths is to show that sort of honor and remembrance because uh, we feel that people die twice. They die once physically and then they die again when you their name is spoken for the last time. So it's it's important for us not to forget these people. And for that that woman not forgetting her husband and having that opportunity to help heal at that moment. <laughs> you know, it's it, it's it's more than just the cost and sponsorship of a wreath. There's there's something there that's intangible, and that's that's really what the appeal of the organization really is. That's a yeah, that's a beautiful message, and I, I'm sure you know you're lucky you get to hear a lot of these, you know, through the work that you do. How did you become involved with the organization? <laughs> well, thank you, COVID nineteen. Um, you know, uh, it, it's a it's a long story short that uh, my wife and I both worked for the same place and both ended up unemployed at the same time. And she sat on the couch crying and I said, you know what, um, there's a higher power out there who made the decision to clear our plate and put us in a different place in life. And literally the very next week, I'm working for Reads Across America and, and here I am and helping these folks get through pandemic times, which is for us, it's it, it's kind of a match made in heaven. And it's interesting because when I jumped into the, the fray probably about six months ago, um, it was almost as if we, I had been here five years. It was that comfortable of a fit. Um, my background in, uh, in, in media and in broadcasting and in PR 
is that that I started off as a broadcaster, did that for 20 years. Concurrently, while I was doing that, in order to maintain my clients, I accidentally opened my own agency to keep them from migrating to other sources. And in that, the company grew and grew and grew to the point where I left broadcasting to handle the clients. And the clients, which started off as pizza places and mom and pop shops and car dealerships, suddenly turned into, at one point in time, Microsoft, the LA Kings, uh, uh, the Army, uh, New Hampshire's timber industry, New Hampshire's real estate industry. And all of these things, all of these experiences play into what Reads Across America does. When we talk about the, the tip lands up in Maine where they get the boughs for the reeds, uh, that's my timber industry. When we talk about in, interacting with the media, those are my years in broadcasting and media. Um, even my connections with sports teams and so forth is all about the, the promotions and the, the ways that you can interact and do things in order to uh, help raise funds for reeds and things like that. So it all plays into it. And it just it was really a, a really good fit. So, uh, you know, I'm one of the very rare people that gets to say thank you, COVID-19. <laughs> That's nice to hear. And, and like for any communicator, you can always learn from your past experiences and they really do always contribute to what you're doing in your future plans. So that's, you know, that's nice to hear. And I hope the best for you and your wife as well. well thank you. And uh, I see you do have a little buddy behind you. Yes, that's Mixie. Uh, yep. <laughs> we enjoy pets on the broadcast. So, <laughs> Well, once again, COVID-19, this is working at home. <laughs> so, uh, I have coworkers. They don't speak to me, but uh, you know, <laughs> They're still fun around the water cooler. Oh, yes. Oh, mine speaks to me when he wants lunch. So um, <laughs> you might see him at some point. He's having a cat nap at the moment. Um, another benefit of working from home. Uh, so I did want to talk to you a bit about Reese Across America in general. And um, COVID obviously has changed everybody's plans. And as, as you know, um, you were saying it, it's usually a, a bigger celebration um, throughout several thousand locations, those sorts of things. Um, but with COVID and the precautions that need to be taken, it's bound to be different this year. Um, so I'd just like to let to know and what our, our viewers know, what are your initiatives? What initiatives are you guys taking this year to celebrate Reads Across America that might be different from years past? That's a good question. Let me know. <laughs> No, um, the, the reality is, uh, it, I think Darwin said it best that, um, and I'm paraphrasing when I say this, it's not the smartest and it's not the strongest that survive. It's the one that's most adaptable. And that's really what this year has been about. I, really, anyone that's sitting there going, well, this is the way we've always done it. That, those are the folks that are the first ones that are going to fail. Um Reads Across America is an organization run on volunteers. We do have 2,200, I'm sorry, 2,200 is what we started the year with. We've actually grown to 2,400 locations as of right now. And we look to place 2.2 million reads on December 19th. Now those 2,400 locations usually have on average about five groups that help collectively gather reads for say one cemetery. Arlington National Cemetery, for example, is almost a quarter of a million graves. Wow. So with that, they, they have many groups that help build that pool that is going to add to that. Um, and that means, you know, thousands of people out there raising funds and doing what they can and uh, bake sales and things of that sort on a normal year. Uh, on this year, it really depends on the area. Um, for instance, in Maine, uh, where our headquarters is located, until recently, that's been a, a very untouched area. So they've been able to hold 5K races. They've invited people out for concerts and in, 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 in the museums and so forth, um, but not in other areas, uh, other hard hit areas, Wisconsin, Chicago, um, they, they've had to you know remain indoors. And what we've had to do as an organization is to be able to provide tools for these volunteers to be able to fundraise from the comfort and safety of their own home. So we've done things like setting up web pages where they're able to um, uh, collect funds very easily or get donations very easily. 
Uh, we've set up, we work with AT&T veterans. They've set up a text to donate program. So people can just use their phone and, and text to donate. As a matter of fact, uh, if you wanted to, it's just texting uh, wreath 22 to 20222 right on your phone. It's very simple. Um, but the other thing too, is we've also made uh, partnerships and deals with organizations that normally you wouldn't see coming together. For instance, a organization that uh, honors veterans with wreaths, and that's what we do. Um, but instead we put on a virtual concert, which we then made a deal with a streaming company. Um, Showcase Cinema has opened up a streaming network called Showcase Now. And our virtual concert is on there with all kinds of asks for donations and things of that sort. So this is being used as a virtual fundraiser. And our members are able to kind of email that link to friends or send it via social media. And from the comfort of their own home, they get to watch the same thing together and have these watch parties. So things like that. Uh, for instance, when we're laying the wreaths, we're at this point in time, everything from business as usual to car drive-throughs to put the wreaths on there, to virtual wreath ceremonies with a, a limited number of people placing them. But the, the reality is with all these different changes and all these different adaptions to our mission, um, the mission doesn't change. The mission remains the same. It's to honor our veterans. And our veterans are the same ones that trudged through the mud, that marched in rain, that you know, stormed the beaches of Normandy on D-Day, they've seen the worst of it. This is uncomfortable. It's not the worst, but it's uncomfortable. And in their honor and in their memory, um, it, it's our, our privilege to be able to continue this mission to show them that we're as committed to them as they have been to us and our freedom. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you guys have really been able to run the gamut in terms of, you know, doing just some different things that, um, you know, other organizations can probably learn from, um, you know, as you're saying, you know, partnering with different organizations or, or different, uh, I, I see you guys have a partnership with Mission Barbecue, um, which- Mission Barbecue is a great partnership. The Mission Barbecue, um, what they do is they call it the, uh, the, the Mission Cup. And for you know, they, they basically you buy a coffee and it comes in a cup and uh, you get to keep the cup and the cup uh, is a two dollar donation to Reads Across America. And uh, there's many organizations out there that are doing some wonderful things to help us along. Uh, Pilot Flying J. Uh, there, there are uh, truck stops all across uh, the, the middle United States. And uh, what they're doing is because of the chain shortage that is going on, rounding mm -hmm. up for Reads. So instead of it being five fifty-seven, it's six bucks. The difference goes to us, and collectively, when when they're all said and done, uh, that's going to be a good amount of reads that we can honor veterans with. Um, uh, Crowley has uh, been very generous in their transportation, and they're actually going to be transporting reads across the ocean to Puerto Rico for us, which is just absolutely amazing. Pen Fed is another organization. Um, they realized that our normal six mile long convoy, which we uh, drive from Maine down to Arlington to wow. deliver those reeds, um, that convoy really isn't going to take place like it normally does. Uh, a lot of social distancing, not a lot of stops, hotel stays, restaurant stays, uh, parties that we would normally have for the drivers. A lot of this isn't going to take place. But what is going to take place is a virtual convoy with interviews and discussions and uh, talks with the drivers, which is in this year, an amazing thing because these are the essential workers that have been keeping the country going. And Penn Fed is, is, has generously donated their, their whole media team to the convoy. And for a week and a half, they're going to be riding around and showing people what's going on, how they do what they do and telling the stories of these essential workers. So, you know, with with all this, it, you know, you you see a problem like, for instance, change or, or or for instance, the the convoy not being able to happen as it normally does. It, to you know, it almost sounds cliche to say that change is an opportunity, and it really is because people are saying, "Wow, you changed, and that's what you did." Wow, let me take a look and see what you did there, and that creates interest, and that interest is what's driving us right now. That's awesome. That's going to be such a amazing virtual you know 
mass of content to be able to watch and see and um, you know, something that you guys will be able to use for, you know, years and months to come um, and a great feat, which is, is really awesome. Um, I also see that you guys have a radio station. Uh, you, do. You, you hear about podcasts and everything nowadays, but this is actually like a 24 seven broadcast channel. It is. Yeah, it's a, it's an internet radio station, Reads Across America Radio. And if you just go to our website, you know, same place where you would donate, uh, you just go to readsacrossamerica.org. And there's a button there at the bottom of the screen for our radio station. And you can listen in. And it is amazing. So the, the way that I'm going to sell this is the, the folks at Reads Across America, a good number of them are old radio people. So for us, this is kind of old home day. It, it keeps us in broadcasting, things of that sort. So we built the radio station and we do all the things that uh, no radio station really does anymore. We don't limit our playlist. Uh, we, we do lots of interviews. Uh, liners are out the window. We have conversations and it's good old fashioned radio back the way it was in the 70s. And it's uh, it's got a lot of good music. It's a mix of country and rock and classic rock and in uh, today's music. But it's all spiritual, uplifting, positive music, and it's it's just amazing to listen to. So I, I'd urge anyone to tune in every once in a while. That's cool. That's you know, it's nice to see you guys doing some creative stuff that uh, you know it kind of benefits anybody. I mean, I haven't listened to the radio in a long time, so maybe I'll take it. The other thing too is, I mean, we. You, we talked about stories. We started off talking about stories. And you you have to build vehicles within your PR framework that's going to be able to tell those stories. It's not just enough to collect them. Now that you've got them, what are you going to do with them? That's the big question. So Reads Radio allows us an opportunity not to pull out something for, you know, like, like I pulled out a story from last night. That, that was last night's story. Um, what's going on right now? Who can we talk to right now? That is what the radio is great for because we can talk about events that are happening. We can talk to sponsors who are helping us along. Uh, we can talk to celebrities who support the cause. Uh, there's just so many different avenues to show people and showcase that there is some good people out there with an American spirit that won't be unhinged and and you get to hear it on the radio and and kind of find out how they tick and and what they're doing and it's 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 really uplifting that's great we definitely need more uplifting uh content <laughs> lately so uh happy to hear it um and and this is all really interesting and i know people are watching um how can those who are interested in learning more you know get involved sure uh first place start off at that website once again www.readsacrossamerica.org uh, I would also suggest uh, taking in that uh, Showcase Now streaming uh, concert. Uh, you'll get to see some folks like the Bellamy Brothers and Craig Morgan and Sawyer Brown, uh, you know, uh, and, and how they celebrate and, and even write songs about Reads Across America and the snow at Arlington, uh, which, is, which was a big hit. Um, and then there's also uh, the opportunity to go to our Facebook page, friend us, follow along with what's going on. I would urge anybody, anybody that's in public relations to watch that Facebook channel because the things that we're going to be doing between the convoy, the interviews with all of our uh, supporters and volunteers, uh, you'll get to see a real sense of you can use that medium to help tell your story and build audience and not only build audience, but use it as a platform to draw in new audience. And when we talk about social media in this day and age, yeah, there's you know arguments about Facebook losing popularity and things of that sort, but it's like any channel. If you let it die, it'll die. But if you cultivate it, you can build upon it. And with uh, our Facebook and also what's going on on Reed's radio, we've signed deals with uh, Trucker Radio on satellite, uh, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Tim on channel 124 who's picking up and will be starting to broadcast some things from our convoy. So we, we make these deals and, and, and build these relationships to help cultivate these folks so that we can help build our audience from their audience, but at the same time, service their audience with a good message about uh, great things that are happening in our country. 
That's awesome. Well, I'm really excited to watch this convoy virtually. Um, that's like nothing I've ever seen before. <laughs> so I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm bought in. I'm ready to go. Uh, so I want to thank Sean today for taking the time. Our PR News Live always goes so quickly. I want to thank Sean. I know it's a busy day probably for you um, as well as, uh, as Mixie there. Mixie? Mixie, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Mix, Mixie's the uh, the brainchild behind today for us, uh, and this is a little bragging point. So far, we've had uh, about 300 articles in the media nationwide, and with a uh, re reach of about, let's see, 180 million impressions, um, and that's just so far today. So um, the, the day is going to end up uh, very well for us uh, media-wise, and, and we're very appreciative of everybody's interest. I want to thank both you and your audience. Uh, it's it's an amazing thing to, to do something like this because uh, this this is the type of thing that helps build our great country into a better community. So thank you. Thank you for having us on. Yeah, no problem. And I, I hope it's great promotion. Sounds like it'll be great promotion for you know December. So uh, excited for you guys there. Um, and I wanted to let everyone know that our deadline for applying for the CSR awards is this Friday. So if you've done some great work to help out the community, uh, why not celebrate it? We will share a link with more information in the chat, or you can go to find out more information at prnewsonline.com slash pr-news-awards and look for the CSR awards there. Deadline Friday, remember that. Um, so I want to thank you all again for listening. Thank you for Sean for coming on. And a big thank you to all of our veterans on this day and stay well.